Okay, good morning everyone and uh, always a wonderful pleasure to be with you all and uh, to catch up each week and discuss things that we need to do in order to improve our skills, our heart, our mind as leaders of our own businesses and collaborators together in this wonderful cause and community of helping others to become more. I want to share us an experience that I had over the weekend um, that taught me a very wonderful lesson. Uh, I, I learned the hard way. So this, this is me being a little bit vulnerable here and sharing a moment where I dropped the ball and uh, what I learned as a result. So um, as I think probably most of you know, I've recently published a book. Um, it's been wonderfully exciting, that, that journey and seeing that get launched. And um, from time to time, my publisher puts me in touch with different people to be invited to speak on a podcast or on a virtual event or what have you, or maybe contribute in an article or a magazine or be interviewed somewhere on what have you. It all helps to build that brand and what have you, which is great. It's fun. Well, I had an appointment this weekend, uh, just gone, and uh, I had a 15-minute slot. And I thought, well, 15 minutes. You yeah, know, that's not too hard, is it? You know, I've spoken for much longer. It's a subject that I'm very comfortable with, of course, because it's on the subject that I wrote my book about. So not too big a deal. Um, they did a technical run through the day before, which was great. They were very professional, uh, very professional. And, um, and one of the people that was you know, running through his materials uh, had a lot of slides. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, that's far too many slides for a 15 minute presentation. I made the terrible snap decision in that moment to judge this man as not being very professional. Right? I even saw a couple of his slides and one of them had a picture of one of those blue creatures off of that movie, The Avatar. Have any of you seen that film? Uh, many years ago, James Cameron made it, but this, these aliens that were made, you know, all these big blue creatures. Anyway, I looked at it and thought, oh my goodness, what is, he t what is he gonna be talking about? Oh no, right, and, I, and I, 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 I judged the environment that I was going into on the weekend as maybe something low key, something that would be kind of entry level PR opportunity kind of thing, yeah? And uh, in the process, uh, I remember I said to Kim on Saturday, well, you know, my, meet, my speaking slot, the meeting started at nine, my speaking slot's at 11.30. I'm going to jump on an hour before just to get familiar, get, kind of get in the zone, get the energy right, double check that I've got the dress code proper, that kind of thing, yeah? And, um, and I'm going to make some notes so I can get ready to give my presentation when my time's up. I'm going to prepare in that hour before. Um, and I jump on and I come in and maybe my energy level is at this level, right? Whatever that represents, yeah? The guy that's speaking when I get on the, on the, onto the uh, webcast, his energy level is up here, right? And not only is it up there, and he's wonderfully conversational, ever so dynamic, um, but he's just pouring out data to substantiate and back up everything he's saying. This guy is intelligent, he's informed, uh, he knows his material inside and out, and he's very academic in the process, but also kind of wonderfully engaging and storytelling all at the same time, right? And I look down at his name and it says John Gray. And then I realize that this is the John Gray, the author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, right? Very, very famous book. I'll be amazed if anyone hasn't heard of it, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm speaking with John Gray, right? And here I am going, ah, oh, I'll just browse in here and I'll jump in, make a few notes. I should be fine, not a problem, right? And then the next guy that got on was this man that had, you know, a number too many of uh, slides with this funny avatar alien looking creature. I thought, what's, gonna, what's he gonna be speaking out about? You know, and, and again, like I said, I've made that snap decision to judge incorrectly. We all make judgments, don't we? And we all do that. And, um, and as he gets introduced, the host, who is a former radio broadcaster, so his energy levels up there as well, says, well, this is a you know, famous, astro uh, well-known astronomer. Um, must have been a difficult job for you to become an astronomer. And I'm thinking, why would it be a difficult job for him? 
He says, because of course your father is the world famous astronomer that was you know, working with Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, what have you, and helping them get to the, and then he starts showing photographs of their families playing together when he was kids. And, and the reason he had that avatar picture up was because he had a business, along with being an astronomer and a CFO and an entrepreneur, uh, he'd done, he had this very big business that he had sold to James Cameron who produced Avatar and he'd been involved in that film. And I'm, my mind is just starting to blow. And you can imagine what it's also doing. I'm starting to panic because my time is up next and I'm realizing I did not evaluate this opportunity properly, right? And, uh, and so I started to scramble and I'm going, I need data, I need data. And I pull out my book and I'm thumbing through it, looking for some, some statistics to back up. And I'm like, ah, there's too many stories. There's too much fluff. What am I doing? What am I doing? And I started to panic. And, I, and then I just thought, I was like, okay, take a deep breath. Ben, you just be Ben. You do your thing. Don't try to compete with them. Just do your own thing. You still deliver your message, your way, what have you. Took some deep breaths. I did my piece. I'm pleased to say it went very well and they've invited me back. But this is, this, this is let, me, let me share a side note. Um, they invited, uh, fortunately, I had a foundation of skills that got me through it in spite of my lack of preparedness. Yeah, that helped. Um, the audience was a very high level audience as well. Podcast hosts, TEDx hosts, and so on. A number of whom have reached out and said, can I have you on my podcast? Can we collaborate? Can we do something? And so I'm finding my contact list is starting to expand in a wonderful way as I build out through these opportunities. Fantastic. Why do I share this? So I, I, I share that, that caveat or that, that end note just to let you know that whilst I had panicked and been ill-prepared, it didn't in that moment end in catastrophe. I've had another situation where it did. I might share that one a little bit later on. Why do I share this? Because we each have opportunities to reach out and connect with others. And if we've been in this business for a while, we can rest on our laurels. We can rest on the fact that I've been there before, done it before, know what I'm doing. I'm comfortable with this. And so I don't really need to prepare. Um, I can shoot from the hip. I can go with the flow. You know, I'm, I'm always in the zone, yeah? Uh, I learned in that moment over the weekend, that's a bad thing to do. Yeah, that's a bad thing to do. So when we do that, I, 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 kinda, I came away from that meeting going, I kind of disrespected them. Yeah, I, I made some snap decisions. I made some bad judgments. They were incorrect. And as a result, I didn't prepare and give them my best. I'm fortunate that the outcome was what it was and they've invited me back and I've got a chance to really prepare good. And I've got an hour slot now versus a 15 minute slot um, later on where they can have Q and A's and, you know, dig in deeper to get to know me better or what have you, which is great. So I pulled it out of the bag at the last minute stroke of luck. Yeah. Lucky break there. I wouldn't rely on that as a strategy moving forward. Would you? No, that's not a good thing to do. Uh, we have a lot of great events coming up. We live in a world right now that has gone online significantly for connecting with people because of this constant quarantining that's going on. Some places are getting better. Some places are getting worse. I live in California. We're getting you know, locked up pretty tight right now um, as a consequence of what's going on. And, and we've gone through the cycle, haven't we, where all of a sudden everything started to go online and we go, hey... <laughs> We're loving life, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Uh, we were built for this space, right? We've already been there. We don't need to change or adapt at all. And then what we're finding is over the last few months, people have become more familiar with Zoom. They're doing it more and more and more. They're connecting in all sorts of different ways. People are getting creative and people are also starting to experience Zoom fatigue. Yeah, where they're going, oh, I'm tired of getting on Zoom again. I'm not necessarily talking about a knee cancer space. I hope not. Yeah, but I can see, I've, I've seen other people go, oh, I'm tired of another Zoom meeting. You know, even my church meetings are on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything's on Zoom, right? And, uh, and people are getting that fatigue. What does that require us to do then? Do we just keep going, well, we know the space, so we're good? 
No, it requires us to level up, to play better, to perform better, to respect our peers better, to prepare more, do more, get more creative. Yeah, we've got a new event coming up, our Zoom event on the 15th of August. A great event. These have been really well attended. This is our third one now. The last two have been really well attended, right? In fact, I'll probably venture to say it's the most well attended event in North America right now that we have. Yeah, fantastic. And what we're doing in this coming event is making it different. Again, this was different when we first launched it. We're changing the layout, the format for this, introducing a panel discussion with health experts, healthcare professionals, and we're engaging a new style and a new approach to engage the audience differently. So that's great. So from that end, the preparation and planning has pivoted and we're elevating it. We're increasing its value and contribution to your business. What does that mean for you? I want you, what my invitation today for each of you is to not make the mistake that I made this past weekend and take it for granted to evaluate it, measure it as something that you're familiar with, that you're capable of participating in at whatever level you've performed at before and just slide right in and do the same thing. We cannot do that. Um, that that's, that's, you know, I, I, I gave myself a good spanking for that on Saturday. Um, we need to make sure we don't do that kind of stuff. So what can we do to prepare for this coming event? My invitation to you would be, to get out the contact lists and really personalize our invitations. Do some due diligence, do some homework. Rather than do blanket emails or blanket Facebook posts, make sure we do some customization. Private text, private email, pick up the phone and use the phone itself and make personal conversation with people. Do things in an intimate level, get a little bit more um, customized in the way that you find out how they're doing, what their needs are, and let them know a little bit more about the event. Study the event, get familiar with the agenda, and then get out there. And let's, let's do some real meaningful invite, uh, inviting for people to participate in this event. And then, of course, as, as we've talked about in the past, uh, the best time to plan to follow up is when we invite people to make a commitment and they accept. Yeah. So as we reach out, as we do that personal touch, as we customize our message, as we tailor it to their individual needs, invite them to participate when they say yes. In that moment, we plan, excuse me, to follow up and invite people to connect with you again after the meeting. I'd love to find out what your thoughts were. I'd love to know what you think. I'd love to know how you felt as you heard the testimonials, because these to me are often the highlight of the event. Yeah, when people share their own unique experience with NECAM, you just can't beat it. Yeah, I'd love to get your feelings and find out what you think. Um, so extend those invitations, do the preparation. That's my invitation, prepare and level up. So wherever you think you are in the business, whatever you think you've done before, whatever your skill set you feel is, if you think you're great, get even better. Yeah, if you think you're good, get better, right? Wherever we're at, level up. That's my invitation. Don't disrespect the audience and take them for granted. Give them the time that they deserve. Be with them through the process. Be prepared to have your phone on hand when the event is in play and message them. Oh, I really like that. What did you think? That was an interesting point. Have that little private chat that goes on, you know, so that you're engaging with them and getting them to engage with the event, you know? Uh, think of ways that you can make it meaningful for them. Perhaps you can introduce them to one of the speakers. Hey, if you really like what such and such said, maybe I can introduce you afterwards. Yeah, show off the fact that you're connected. Yeah, make the most of it. So let's do this. Let's do this. This is my commitment. I'm throwing myself in there too, because like I said, I've, I've learned from my weekend's mistake. And uh, I don't want to get on the stage with John Gray again going, I think I'll wing it, right? No, no, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, so let's do this. Let's level up. Let's give our very best to every situation. We have opportunities every day 
that come about, sometimes we see them. We kind of see, we kind of find what we seek and what we're looking for, can't we? Um, I've got just a quick question here that's just come up, sorry. Uh, where can we find information about the new event to study and prepare? Um, information is in the WhatsApp groups. If you're in the WhatsApp groups, there is also a Facebook page. Um, Mike, do you have the link handy that you could maybe post that in? If you're not sure, Carol, I, my last post on Facebook, if you go to Facebook and look me up, my last post was for that event and you'll have the information there that you can pull from, but it will be available in the WhatsApp groups. Mike, feel free to unmute if you wish and, um, and contribute and add any more thoughts. I'm just doing a search right now to, to okay. bring up the okay. link. Yeah. Okay. So, so the WhatsApp groups, if you're on the launch partners, um, if you actually search on Facebook for zoom in event, it should will come up. up. Yeah. Oh, you don't have WhatsApp. Okay. Are you on Facebook, Carol? If you're on Facebook, go on there. It's the zoom in event. Um, and again, worst case scenario, just Facebook search me connect with me. My last post was promoting that event and you can just do a copy and paste or you can share it um, and add your own comments to or download the picture to your own laptop and share it out via email. So things that you can do to share and promote. You, you've got those uh, flyers that Mike has created. I think there's four different varieties. Uh, right. You can pick the How many, Mike? I believe there's five. Five. Okay. Apologies. Five different varieties. You can pick one that you feel resonates with you or your audience, and you can share it on Facebook. You can share it on WhatsApp, on Facebook Messenger, via text, in email. You can print it off and you can leaflet drop it through your neighborhood. There's a lot of different ways that you can use that. You can use that as a foundation as talking points. So you can gather information there as well. We've got a great structure and format. This way, this one is going to be a little bit different to last, let me just run through very briefly the format and schedule. We're gonna start out with the testimonials and we've got some very dynamic, we always do, wonderfully dynamic, charismatic, excited, vivacious, enthusiastic, lovable distributors uh, that are gonna be sharing their testimonials uh, about their Nikan journey, um, which is gonna be really wonderful to hear. And again, you'll notice we always have variety and diversity in that group of, of testimonials. So look out for that diversity, look out for that variety, and look out for that change in, in dynamic and experience that they've all had and, and the stories that they share. Uh, after that, we're gonna have the, the business opportunity presentation. We normally start with that. And then at the end, rather than doing a QA, and a we're gonna have a professionals, a healthcare professionals panel discussion. They proved to be very popular uh, with Niken people. They certainly are popular with guests. Um, so a panel discussion where they can talk about the health benefits uh, of our products, the unique value and contribution, the, the USPs, if you will, the unique selling points uh, of our products and talk about it from the context of their professional experience and legacy uh, that they bring to the table. So a wonderful way to give validation and authority and credibility to what we're doing. You can see the link there um, in the chat if anyone wants to connect on the Facebook events page. Um, so, so a great format and structure. And again, that will be hosted by Mike, by Gary, Dr. Gary Lindner and myself um, as per usual. But um, bring people along. It's going to be great. We are pivoting. We are elevating. We are diversifying with this event so that we don't give you the same old, same old. We recognize that we've got lots of events going on here too. So we want to make sure that we keep this vibrant and dynamic as well. Uh, give you a reason to keep coming back and getting value. So thank you very much. It's a shorter meeting than normal today. I hope that's okay. Uh, I've often been told a short meeting is a good one. Um, so let's get out there, get our contact lists out. Let's start sharing. Let's start inviting. Do some good practice beforehand. Don't take for granted your contact list. Um, don't give them a disservice. Um, give them your very best. And uh, I promise you, when you give them your best, when you honor them with your best efforts, you'll get more coming back of that, I am convinced. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll speak to everyone next week. See you.